So today I want to talk to you about the seasons of life and the groups of people in each of these seasons. I want to talk about six seasons. And it's not a cliche thing, but the last one, it's actually surprising. Now, I could tell you which one is the last one, but if I do, you won't understand the dynamics of what I want to talk to you about. So with that in mind, I really wish you watched the whole video because there's a lot of value in it. I promise you, you won't regret. Let's go. So it's a good day. So the first season I want to talk to you about is the season of your parents. Parents and siblings. Over the first 20 years of your life, that's when you spend time with them. But as soon as you turn 20, 21, 22, after uni, the time with your parents and your siblings decrease very sharply. And you will probably have very few opportunities to spend time with them. Maybe over Christmas, over Easter, celebrations, birthdays, but that's it. Life moves on and you don't have enough time with them. Now, my advice to you would be this. Cherish and enjoy the memories that you have right now. And if you're over 20, go back and every chance you have, give them a call, send them a message, spend time with them, listen to the stories, sit down on the table. Trust me, I live on the other side of the world from my mom and dad. They're still alive, they're healthy, but my kids miss them, I miss them, I don't have the chance to sit down with them that often and they hurt sometimes. So as the time decreases and the time that you spend with them decreases, value and cherish more that season. That's the first season. Second season is very similar. Similar to your parents and siblings, your family, your extended family. You don't get to spend that much time with your extended family. I remember when I was young, we had one of our aunts that took my grandmother over to live with her and every single family reunion would happen in their house. My mother had, I think, 11 brothers and sisters and all of them had so many kids. We don't know, like the family pictures looked like a football team. And then we would, we would be there and it would be fun and we had like four or five tables, everyone eating together. Fast forward 20 years, I'm 40 now. Some of them are gone, some of them have their own families. We don't get to spend that much time. Every now and again, I send a message to my cousins and, and things like that, but you don't get to spend time with them. And it also, time with your family also decreases sharply after you're 20. So you gotta enjoy that season. Now, if you're over 20, here's a tip for you. Every chance that you have for a family reunion, why don't you do it at your own house? Invite them over. If you live in the same city, maybe same state, invite them over and enjoy that time because time goes by so fast and you can't take it back. That's one of the things that you cannot do is to take time back. So enjoy while you have it. Now, season number three is the season of your friends. As you can see in this graphic right here, the season decreases and it peaks, it peaks at about 18. And why is that? Most of us will go to the same school, same high school. Some of us will go to the same university. I remember when I was young, uh, we had a group of friends about uh, when I was about 12 or 13 years of age. And the same group of friends, we went through uh, middle school, high school, and university together. Now, some of us went to different universities and some of us were too dumb to go to uni anyway. <laughs> but the reality is we kept that relationship close. But I can tell you, I can count on my hand the number of real friends I have. So here's the advice for that season of friends. It will peak at about 18, 19, 20 maybe. Then it will go down. And the reason why it goes down is because our lifestyle changes. Back then, the only preoccupation we had was school, maybe university. Right now, you have family, your kids' schools, and your friends will change. Now you start to become friends with the other parents. Now you start to become friends with the teachers or the coaches, in my case. <laughs> so as the seasons and the lifestyle changes, your friends will change as well. But if you still have friends from that season, Boy, oh boy, that is a great thing. I'll tell you a little secret. We have a group on my phone. It's called, uh, it used to be called NBA Finals. And the reason why is because we, we watch the games together, but we focus on the finals. And it is a holy mess when the game is going because I'm in Australia, some of them are in Brazil, some of them are in America, some of them are in Europe. It's about seven of us. And we watch the game at the same time. And while I'm screaming, because it's 11 o'clock in the morning here, the other guys is, is saying on the, on the phone, as we're watching the game live together and discussing on WhatsApp, 
they're saying, don't yell, man, my wife is sleeping <laughs> and it's a mess. But those are really good friends. I can guarantee you, if I pick up the phone right now and say, hey, I'm in trouble, get, get on the plane and meet me here. They will be here in the blink of an eye. That's the value of a true friend. We underestimate the power of friendships, man. But the Bible says there are friends that are closer than brothers. Here's a question for you to meditate on. Who are these friends in your life? Do you have them? And if you don't, it's never too late. You can still make those friends. As the seasons of life changed and as the lifestyle changed, you can still make new friends. They will be friends for life. Just bear with me. And I know we've been talking about family, siblings, relatives, and our friends. But as we progress on this conversation, you will see that it's going to get very serious. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, invest in your friends. They're important. The next season is the season of your marriage, the season of your partner. Just before we started this conversation, uh, Jordan and I, the guy behind the cameras, the magician that makes all of these happen, we were talking about how important it is to find the right person. We were talking about my wife. My wife is totally different than me. My wife is very introvert. She's very shy. It's different than me, but we complete each other. We, our favorite move is, our favorite movie is Jerry Maguire. You know, that scene in the elevator when they look at each other. It's like, you complete me. So um, marriage is important. And here's the beauty of the season for marriage. You will probably start that season at about 20, 25. Granted, people are getting married later these days, but nevertheless, when that season starts, the time with your partner will probably start at that age, 21, 22, 23, 25 maybe, and then you will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and you'll find out that for the rest of your life, you will spend time with that person. I had a video a while ago, I might mention that in the card, talking about the importance of these three things. These three things will define the quality of your life. Who you marry, what's your mission, and who is your master. Who you marry, what's your mission, and who is your master. If you, if you nail down on the choice of these three things, your life will be a pleasant life. And if you miss out on it, you'll be in trouble. Your marriage season is probably the most important season of your life. Choose well. Now, that's the reason why there's so much divorce is not because of incompatibility. It's because people don't know how to choose. They choose wrongly. So choose well who you will marry because that will define, that will decide, that will be the main point of the quality of your life. And you spend a lot of time with your wife. Trust me, I sleep on the same bed with the same woman for 20 years. It's been the best 20 years of her life, by the way. <laughs> but that's true. You have to choose well who you marry. That season is very important because out of that season comes the next season, the season of your kids. Let's talk about that. <sighs> the season of your kids, man. This, this is gonna hurt. That's why I said it was gonna hurt. Uh, I had my first daughter, I think I was, she's 11, I'm 40, so, or oh, she's 12, so I was 28 when my first daughter was born. I remember like yesterday, when she was born, there was five of my wife's friends actually in the room. It was, it was an spectacle. Uh, it took 12 hours during the labor and we were all very excited. And when she was born, I was the first one to hold her, not even my wife. Um, I cut the umbilical cord and I held her in my arms and I said something to her in her ears that nobody knows, my wife doesn't know, no one knows. But it's written in her diary. I have a little diary that I keep memories of her and my goal is to give this diary to her when she gets married, if I'm still alive. And there's, it's packed with memories. And I said something in her ears that no one knows. No one knows. And I won't reveal it to you. <laughs> it's a secret. It's between me and her. But then, when I was studying this, and, and she's 12 years old now, and she's getting to that season where she doesn't want to spend time with me anymore. She's like, yes, I feel, <laughs> I feel sad. You, you need to come to my comfort. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, my little baby, she's a, my daughter is nearly as tall as me. You might have seen her in, in the other videos. She plays basketball. She loves basketball. But she's like, she's starting to treat me like a friend. You know, <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm not your friend, girl. I'm your dad. But when I started studying this, I realized that the season of your kids, it will peak at about 30 years of age. Uh, most, most people will have a kid when they're about 30. Uh, some younger, 
some later, but that's the average. It'll peak there and you, you have the baby, you have sleepless nights, and like they say, you know, the days are long, but the years are short. You have to remember that. The days are long, it's stressful, but the years are short. They go by like that. I remember every single activity I did with my daughter, my first one. Now I have another one, so I'm trying to <laughs> overcompensate on that one. <laughs> but um, I remember everything, every single thing that happened, every single thing. It's right here on my hard drive. But that season peaks when you have the babies and the sleepless nights and the cuddles and the giggles and the crawling and all of it. And if you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You probably have tears in your eyes already like I do. But that season goes by and 20 years later, they are out. And just like the time with our parents decreases drastically after our 20s, the same thing will happen to them. They will get married, they will build their lives and they will move on. And we don't know what to do as parents. We are, we're always lost. Now there are two ways you can go about this and granted, um, I haven't finished that course yet. Maybe what I'm saying to you is not valid, but that's just my experience based on what I hear from other people. There are two ways you can go about this. Number one, you can cripple them. You can make sure that they are dependent on you and you can never teach them anything, never teach them how to fish. Uh, you can keep them very close to you, emotionally attached. And when they grow up, they won't be able to find a good husband or a good wife and they will live with you until they're 35, 40, 45, and you think they're happy, and you'll be happy, but they'll be sad. That's you crippling them. Unfortunately, a lot of people do that. Or you can be brave, and you can understand that children are a blessing from God. And what we do with a blessing, the, the, the meaning of being faithful is multiplying. So your job as a parent is to, number one, create memories that are solid enough that they will make sure that they remember when they grow up. I like that saying, you, you wanna raise your kids in a way that they come back home even when they don't have to. That's the idea. They wanna spend time with you, but it's healthy. They have their own lives and they don't have to come. They come because they want you. And instead of crippling them, you are equipping them. That's the idea. So you teach them everything you have to teach them now. And I know it hurts and I know it's hard because you don't wanna, you don't wanna teach anything a 12 year old kid because you think they're not capable, but they are. They are. Remember when you were 12, you used to take the bus to school and no one came with you? They are capable of doing the same and even more because they have more access. So don't cripple your kids. Equip your kids and make sure that they're equipped enough to make the right choices and you trust because that's what the Bible says. You raise the kid in a way that they should walk. So when they grow up, they will never depart from it. And they might wonder, but the wanderer always comes back. Now, it's very hard for me to talk about that because I, I, I love my kids. I wish they could stay with me forever. But I, always, I also know that if they go, this, this, is how, this is how we live a legacy. A lot of people say, oh, you know, we gotta live a better world for our kids. I believe in leaving better kids to our world. That's how things change. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I hope you're trying to do the same. But there's more, all right? I, I, know this, I know this is heavy, but there is more. This is, the next season is really intriguing. Stay with me, I, I, I promise you, this is gonna mesmerize you. This is jaw dropping, and I know, as soon as I say this, there might be people in the comments or, or haters around who are gonna go like, oh, this is so wrong. But think with me, I, I want you to think deeply about this. This next season that I'm about to mention is extremely important, and it peaks about 30, and it's very similar to your marriage, very similar to your marriage, maybe 25, and then it goes all the way until you're 60. You give 30 to 40 years of your life to that season and this group of people. Do you already know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about your work. Think about it. You go to school, you go to university, time with your parents drop, time with everyone else drop, family, relatives, time with your kids, will drop because you have your kids at about 25 and then you will drop again because they're going to go on their own lives. But with work, you start working at about 18, 19, 20, some of us a bit later, and you work all the way to your 60s, maybe 70s. And I, I hate that idea, but it is true. We exchange our time, our valuable time for money in order to pay the bills and continue to live. It's an infinite game. No one knows how to explain it. It's full of tensions. 
But the reality is, the group of people in there, your co-workers, they will be a huge part of your life. If you think about it, you will spend 40% of your life around those people. You will spend more time with your co-workers than you spend with your cousins, your uncles and aunts. Some of you will spend more time with the co-workers than you spend with your mom and dad. Do the math. Your first 20 years, and then they're dead. Do the math. You spend a lot of time with the co-workers. And uh, that's why I think it's very important to choose well what you do for work. I, I told you earlier who you marry, what's your mission, and who's your master. It's very important to choose well your career. I am passionate about this idea of choosing well early. I, I live by this concept called Ikigai, and I've, I've mentioned it many, many times here. Uh, it's, it's how you find your purpose of life. I think your purpose is extremely connected, very tightly connected to what you do with your hands. The last video we had talking about work and art, I think we artists, we, we generate what we do is creating something. So it's very important for you to choose well what you do, your career. Now you can do, you can live a miserable life and do something, do work, get a job, just to pay the bills, you know, just to get by. You can do that. And you will do it for 40 years and you will regret. There's a book that's being written called The Five Regrets of the Dying. And the number one is having lived a life without purpose. So choose well what you do for work. There are many ways that you can go about to help you find the perfect job or a job that satisfies you, that pleases you. You, you have personality tests. If you go on my channel, there's like Enneagram personality types. Uh, even the Ikigai exercise, you can do that. And if you need any help, I will be more than happy to help. But you do something. Just do it, like the Nike logo, you know? Just do it. You had, if you don't do anything now, there's a sentence, there's a quote that says this. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Planning happens now. I was talking to you about my daughter just uh, uh, a while ago. She's 12 years old, and I'm already planning with her school the, the subjects that she needs to take in order to fulfill her pathway. Apparently, she wants to be a lawyer. So how do we get that to happen? We are working on it right now because I want to set her up for success, not for failure. You have the chance to do that. We don't live in dark times anymore. You have the chance to do that. Last thing I'm gonna say about this is this. I had a friend when I was, you know, in my season of friends, one of those that stuck around. And he used to tell me this thing and I, I never really understood until I was 30-ish, nearly 40. He said, there are three kinds of people in the world. Number one, the people who make it happen. Number two, the people who things happen to. And number three, the people who ask, what the hell happened? <laughs> they just like, it just went like that. And you don't wanna be that one. And maybe things have happened to you. Maybe you've been dealt a bad hand. The reality is if your hand is bad, you got to keep playing. You can't quit. That's the truth. So just do something. Now, the last season and the last group, that's not really a group that I told you, is very intriguing. Um, it's sad, but it's true. You spend a lot of time on your own. That's the season. As you grow old, you will, fade, you, you, will, you will see the birthdays fading away and the funerals crippling on you. you. When you attend more funerals than birthdays in the year, you know that you started a downhill journey. And it's a reality. We are all going to die. Everybody dies. We have 70 or 80 years old, 70 or 80 years in this planet, and that's all. And through the course of these 70 or 80 years, some of us will spend a lot of time alone. Maybe your partner will pass away too short, too soon. Maybe you won't have kids. Maybe you were unfortunate enough to have a good place to work. Maybe you're one of those people who just doesn't relate well. Whatever the case may be, it is a fact, if you look at the graphic, it is a fact that as time goes by, we resource to our own. Now, there is a difference between loneliness and solitude. And what I want to leave you with is the idea of being okay with yourself, being good with yourself. Because being loneliness, be, being lonely means that you're, re, you're relying on people to fulfill something that can never be fulfilled. 
But when you're in solitude, it means that you're in peace with the situation. You're in peace with the circumstances. And the secret of being okay in solitude is understanding that you're not alone. You're not alone. Although you feel lonely, you're not alone because you're not from here. Granted, this video is not religious. It's not supposed to convert anyone to anything. But it's a reality that I live by. And I hope you, you at least think about this. Once the 70 years cease, where are you going to go? What happens after that? If the purpose of life is just 70 to 80 years old and then the lights go off and there's nothing there, it's not really worth living. Think about it. In the scope and in the scheme of the grandiose of things, why would you spend 70 years if there's nothing after this? It does not make sense. I told one of the guys um, in the last video, and shout out to you, like I, I, I can't really mention names, but shout out to you because you're interacting and we were talking about it and he was watching and, and, and having a great time. And I, I, I told him, look, it takes a lot of faith to be an atheist because you have to come up with a lot of things that are not logical. But, you know, I want to respect boundaries and I don't want to cross any boundaries, but the reality is time with family, friends, mom, dad, kids, they all have a, peaking season, a peak season and it lasts for about 10, 15, maximum 20 years. The only constant is the time that you spend on your own. The only company you have for the rest of your life is yourself. You have to be okay with yourself. You have to learn to accept yourself. Now, just to lighten the mood a little bit, <laughs> I, I've accepted that I'm bald. You know, like, there ain't no hair growing up in my head. And, and I've accepted that I'm not the most handsome guy. You know, I gotta overcompensate in other areas. But what is your thing? You have to be okay with yourself because there's no way you can run away from yourself. And the last tip is, if you're gonna go down this journey, understand that there is a God in heaven who looks after you and who cares for you. He literally cares for you. He loves you. Even though you say you don't believe him, that's fine. My daughter says she doesn't believe a lot of things I say, but I still do it and I still love her. And as you love your kids, as you love your family, so God loves you even more. Don't be dismayed, don't walk away, don't live life like as if you're wasting your life. And here's a, here's a sentence that could help you. Live your life like if you're gonna die today, so you don't die like if you've never lived. Does that make sense? You live your life as if you're gonna die today, so that when you die, it doesn't feel like you've never lived. That's, that's a good thing. I hope you've been blessed and thank you for watching to this point. And if you want more, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of stuff on the links down there. And like you probably used to, I don't really like asking people to do things, but that's what we gotta do. So you can click right here and like and whatever, do backflips, whatever you wanna do. But there's links down in the, uh, on the description so you can subscribe to more of the things that we do. And I would really appreciate if you wanna join us and if you have any questions, just find a way to get in touch. More than happy to help. God bless. I'll see you on the next one. So it's a good day.